Yan. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Is my mic working? Hello? Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, what is... Sorry, <laughs> it's my first time live streaming by myself. <laughs> I think the last time I did a live stream on YouTube and Facebook was for NAFCON. Yeah, uh, but anyways, welcome, mabuhay. Um, uh, yeah, so comment in the chat uh, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube where you're watching from. Um, like for me, for example, I am live here in Dave, not Davis. I don't live in Davis anymore. Um, in Sacramento, California. Yeah. Mabuhay, mga kababayan natin. Okay. Um, let's, of course, my first time using StreamYard 2, so please spare with me. Uh, so, Today's live stream is actually just me testing out how I do live streams. <laughs> um, I'll just be talking about um, typhoons in the Philippines and mythologies of typhoons. Um, but I guess a uh, background palamuna kung bakit ako nag live stream today. It's mostly, or it's because I wanted to raise help raise money for NAFCON's by any head response to Typhoon Odette in the Philippines. Because if you don't know, um, the Philippines. Uh, you know, a huge chunk of the Philippines from Visayas and Mindanao suffered greatly from Typhoon Odette that devastated the country just a few days ago. Um, if you haven't seen the, the pictures yet in, on Facebook uh, or any of your news or social media, it's really um, heartbreaking to see um, what our Kababayans are going through, especially during this holiday season. Um, and I'm from NAFCON, so for those who may not know, um, NAFCON stands for the National Alliance for Filipino Concerns. We're a broad alliance. We are a huge alliance of um, different Filipino organizations, institutions, individuals, um, and small businesses across the U.S. that respond to the concerns and the needs of our communities as Filipino Americans in the U.S. at sa mga pangangailangan ng ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas. Um, and we have this ongoing by any hand response um, to um, to what's going on in the Philippines. So um, right now, the Bayanihan response is focusing on Typhoon Odette um, to, to help our Kababayans in the Philippines um, to, you know, <laughs> um, recover or, or, you know, to for, our, the, for the relief and rebuilding efforts in the Philippines. And I'm actually going to show you um, a little update muna bago tayo um, why we why we are here today. Some updates from um, NAFCON itself. Um, but yeah, Comment lang kayo sa, sa comment section sa iba ba. Um, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, let, let me know where you're going from. And I'm gonna highlight some of the comments as I see them. Oh, cool. Laban Salaman Odin Tupas. <laughs> Sacramento, yes, I'm from Sacramento. <laughs> or I live in Sacramento and I used to live in Davis. Um... Oh, cool. We have someone from Zamboanga. Hello. From Subanen. Yay. I wish I know how to speak how, how to speak in Subanen. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. So, <laughs> Tagalog muna. Mabuhay. <laughs> Magandang araw sa Pilipinas. Magandang gabi sa US. Um, this one, watching from Bicol. <laughs> um, Diyos Mabalos. Thank you for watching from Bicol. Um, yeah, so let's see what's Unpacking tech. Sorry. Paano mag share screen? Ayun, share screen. <laughs> Bago lang. Uh, share screen. Where is it? Windows tab. Oh, this is not letting me share. Uh, Oh, cool. Someone's from Big Bear. I used to go to Big Bear when I was in SoCal. So I used to live in SoCal. <clears throat> I used to um, be from um, LA County. Sa... So shout out to mga taga Cerritos, California, or Lakewood, or Long Beach, or um, Carson. <laughs> um, my mom is from Huntington Beach. So shout out to mga taga Huntington Beach. <clears throat> yeah, meron tayong taga Long Beach. Si Esil Borlasa. I'm sorry if I don't know how to pronounce your name right. But yes, 
um, land that is originally um, by the Tongva tribe or, or indigenous people. Um, so um, Davis, California, where I, where I used to live, is um, indigenous um, Patwin land. Um, from Arizona, hey, she, chief, <laughs> chief Filipino, sorry. <laughs> uh, welcome. Um, so sabi ni normal um, ng Subanen. In Subanen, good afternoon is Kempiag. Now, sorry, kung di ko alam i pronounce. I'm so sorry. Um, Claral Pope from SoCal, hello. Sige, mag, mag shout out muna tayo habang di naglulod yung aking dapat ishishare sa inyo. Uh, hello din kay Wolf Manstein. Wolf, Wolf Ramstein, sorry. Can't read today for some reason. <laughs> um, kay Renel Panganiban, Merry Christmas. I'm watching from Bukid Nun. Wow. Mula sa mismo sa Mindanao. Um, oh, si, si Jopay. Hello <laughs> from Philippines. Kumusta? Yan. Dami pala nanonood from different parts of the world. MA Designs from Canada. Hello. Hi. Uh, marami ako mag-anak sa Canada. I have a lot of relatives, cousins in Canada, I think. A third of my cousins on my Aralio side now lives in Canada sa uh, Manitoba. So, hello. Shout out sa aking mga cousins in Canada. Sa aking mga very smart... Um, Actually, I'm just gonna okay. Um, so today, um, like I said, today's topic is really about World One Philippine mythologies on surrounding the typhoon. Um, oh, Naya, Naya Diwata watching while having lunch. Hello. <laughs> um, so yeah. So today's topic is gonna be about typhoon mythologies in the Philippines. Well, I'm gonna be sharing what I know about Kapampangan mythology, and you can also share what you know in the comments. Kung anong mythology around typhoons in your in your in your cultures um again today's uh live stream for, for the rest of the week and next week then i'll be live streaming actually from this week to next week um to help raise funds para sa mga salantano bagyo sa pilipinas for navcons by any kind of response so if you look at the yung li, parang sa news <laughs> yung like scroll sa baba dyan yung link kung paano mag donate sa um Nafcon's typhoon response to Pilipinas. Um, if I can ask my partner Yi, who's also watching, can you uh, please type it in the comment the the link? Salamat. Um. Yeah. I don't know why I can't share screen in this one. I'm supposed to be able to. Ah. Oh. Hello, then K Screeny. <laughs> Did I say that right? Uh, okay, hello, then K. This name is taken from Angat Bulacan. Wow. Or Angat, Angat Bulacan. I forgot, how, I forgot how to say it. I used to know how to say this, this place name in Bulacan because it means I'm elevated in both um, Tagalog and Kapampangan. Good evening, K. Gwyneth Aristo. Um, sino pa bang kailangan natin? Marami na kishan rappers. <laughs> it's happening so fast on my end, so I can't really see. Um, okay, Prince Angeles from Santa Cruz, Laguna. Hello. Okay, Moses Tuhay Longsod, Paula. Um, hello, Dan. Hi. Okay, Hermana, Ana de la Cruz. Hello, mabuhay. Yes, tulong-tulong tayong lahat para sa Bisayas at Mindanao at Palawan. Um, okay, um, Rafael Maya Payeldo, Ibat King Indok Kapampangan, Luid. <laughs> Maya Paldo mo naman kaya ka. Cool, yeah. So you can see in the comments on uh on the yeah, on Facebook, the link to donate is tinyurl.com slash 2021 typhoons. Let me type it down for um those watching on YouTube. Because for some reason my comments here don't go to Facebook, but it goes to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so salamat. Thank you, Yi, for my my beautiful partner who's watching from the other room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. So today, again, uh, we'll talk about typhoon mythologies in the Philippines. But I guess I just wanted to show you the, the video that I made um, a few years ago. Or no, not, not a few years ago. Actually, just last year about typhoon in the Philippines. So I'm going to play it and then we'll go on and just ask. You can ask me any questions about this topic or any of my, my recent videos past couple of months. So yeah, uh, I'll um, share my video. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. 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 Can you see it? Oh, cool. You can see it. I don't know how to. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, I'm going to play it, and then you can ask me questions about it. Average, there's about 20 to 30 typhoons that hit the Philippines every single year. But where do typhoons come from? What are the mythologies surrounding the heavy pouring rain, the thunderstorms, the strong winds, and the floodings caused by typhoons in the Philippines? Let's dig deeper and learn more about the mythology surrounding typhoons in the Philippines. Wait lang, if you would like to watch this video in Tagalog or Taglish, Tagalog English, check out the links up here or down below for the Taga Tagalog <laughs> for the Taglish version of this video that was posted last week. Now back to our topic. Mabuhay or in kapampangan luwid kayo. Welcome back to another video. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And in this channel, if you're apologies of our ancestors. As a friendly reminder, and as I've mentioned in many of my previous videos, Back in the day, the Philippines was not just one nation. It was not this one nation state that we are familiar with today. It was an archipelago of many different nations, many different ethnicities, of many different kingdoms and diverse indigenous peoples. A majestic group of islands interconnected with the thriving civilizations of Southeast Asia and beyond. It was not isolated. In fact, the history of our islands had long been interwoven with the many rich civilizations of the ancient world. So for today's topic, I'll be sharing the mythology surrounding typhoons according to the indigenous and pre-colonial Kapampangan culture, according to the stories, the oral traditions that were passed down to us by our ancestors, the stories we hear from our elders back at home. So what is a typhoon in Kapampangan? So typhoon in the Kapampangan language is called a bagyo. So it's bagyo in Tagalog, bagyo in Kapampangan. And the word bagyu comes from the Kapampangan word bagyus. And in Kapampangan, bagyus means wings. But these are not your ordinary wings. In Kapampangan, we use different words to refer to different kinds of wings. Bagyus are the wings that are outstretched, wings that are widely open. While the more familiar word pakpak refers to the wings that are in resting position. So again, bagyus are the wings that are widely outstretched, widely unfolded and majestically flapping. These are the wings of the mighty birds, the eagles, the hawks, and the wings of the diwatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of our ancestors, and many more. So wait, what's the connection between the flapping of the wings with the rainstorms and the floodings caused by typhoons? What do wings have to do with typhoons? Why are typhoons called bagyu when the word bagyus originally meant wings, flapping wings? A Typhoons come directly from the divine flapping wings of Apungalura. Apungalura is among the ancient Diwatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of the Kapampangan people, a powerful god with an appearance similar to an eagle. Apungalura is known as the Alili, the representative and the right hand of the king of the gods, Bapung Sinukwan. Bapung Sinukwan was the mighty and the benevolent fiery white phoenix, the supreme god of the Kapampangan people. Bapung Sinukwan was the all powerful god of the sun the god of war, and the god of death of the ancient Luzones. And his alili, or representative, Apungalura, is also known as the Ukum, or the judge of all the souls in the afterlife. Our ancestors believed that typhoons were spawned directly from the flapping wings of Apungalura. Because as the alili of Apung Sinukwan, and the Ukum, or the judge of all the souls in the afterlife, Apungalura is regularly sent by Apung Sinukwan to cleanse our society, to purify the land. Apungalura does this by ferociously flying from what we Kapampangans call the Timog Laut. And this divine flapping of wings results in the strong winds and the devastating typhoons from Timog Laut. The Kapampangan Timog Laut is also known as the Eastern Ocean or what we now call the Pacific Ocean. According to mythology, Apungalura is also the sibling of the Nagarajas, the Dragon Kings, the Diwatas that rule the oceans and the open seas. 
In Kabampang culture, Apong Galura is also known as the patron god of the drowning sailors. They pray to Apong Galura to save them from drowning, to allow them to sail peacefully. In fact, to this day, whenever there is a food, Kabampang people will pray to Apong Galura to be merciful, to spare the people on earth from the wrath of the typhoons. Typhoons were seen by our ancestors as a chance for a new beginning, a chance for a fresh start. By fixing the mistakes of the past, as a test of leadership, a test of compassion, a divine evaluation, especially for those seated in power. It was believed that the coming of the typhoon from the divine flap wings of Apongalua was a sign of disappointment. A disappointment from the Duatas, the deities, the gods and goddesses of our ancestors, especially from the benevolent supreme god, Babong Sinukwan. It was believed that this was their way to express their dismay over the event here on earth. It was seen as a sign of their disappointment, of their sadness, and even anger towards the sins of humans here on earth, towards the failures of our society. And so they sent Apong Galura to cleanse our society, to purify the land, and to wash off the evil from earth. But this is not to punish the people here on earth. It was meant to give the people, to give us an opportunity, a chance for a fresh start. It was seen as an opportunity for us to learn from our mistakes and rectify our sins. Our ancestors did not see typhoons and the floodings they bring as cataclysm brought by the end of the world. Instead, they were understood as a part of the natural cycle, the changing of the seasons, that gives way to a new beginning, a necessary process towards a better future, towards a brighter tomorrow. Because back in the day, our ancestors had a strong connection to the environment and an inseparable relationship with Mother Nature. They took great care of our surroundings. They loved and respected Mother Earth. And this is very far from our society today, in which we humans, we ourselves, are the cause of the worsening destruction of Mother Earth. A society in which, instead of saving the Earth, instead of taking care of our environment, We'd rather destroy it and exploit it to make money. And if we really think about it, there is a scientific connection between our destruction of Mother Nature to the ever-worsening disasters. There's a clear connection between our desolation of our planet to the ever-worsening typhoons and deluge. This is all because of our failure to take good care of our planet and our failure to hold those in power accountable. And this is not just in the Philippines but also around the world. But unfortunately, the Philippines has been one of the most devastated countries when it comes to climate change. So maybe our ancestors were right in their belief that the coming of strong typhoons were a sign from above that we need to start correcting the mistakes of our society. For us to sweeping its clean corruption, execution clean of injustices. Because now is really the time for us to be better at taking care of our environment, to change our faulty ways that lead to the desolation of our planet before it becomes too late, before we kill our Mother Earth. Let us do better. Let us unite and take action in saving Mother Nature, not just for us today, but for the next generations, for a brighter future for our people. But wait, let's go back to Apong Galura. Apong Galura was actually not exclusive to us Kapampangans. Apong Galura is actually none other than the Hindu Buddhist god Garuda. In Kapampangan culture and in many parts, different parts of Southeast Asia, the great bird that embodies the god Garuda is none other than mighty eagles, such as the largest eagle of them all, the Philippine eagle. And Garuda can be seen in many symbols that represent different countries such as in India, in Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, and Indonesia. In fact, Indonesia's national airline is also called Garuda Indonesia. And in Japan, Garuda is also known as Karura. And in our own Maranao people of Mindanao, they also have Garuda in their mythologies. They believe that Garudas were this race of creatures that dwell beneath the sea. And if you go to Thailand, you'll find Garuda almost everywhere. It's part of the national symbol. It's actually the symbol of royalty. You can find it in their money and in the many statues of Garuda in their temples and their palaces and many more. In fact, even in the boats of their king, the Garuda is also the majestic figurehead 
off the royal barges. In other words, Garuda can be found everywhere. From India to Japan to Thailand to Cambodia to Myanmar to the Philippines to Indonesia to Malaysia to Singapore and many more. The mythologies of Apungalura reminds us of our rich and colorful Hindu Buddhist past. A past that sadly many of our people are not aware of. A significant part of our roots with fragments that actually survive to this day. In fact, the word Galura survives in our modern day. It's still being used today. It remains one of the oldest traditional indigenous Kapampangan last names. A last name that survived colonialism. So if you're Filipino with the last name Galura with roots from Central Luzon, especially from the ancestral lands of the Kapampangan people, that used to stretch from the Pasig River in Metro Manila all the way north to the provinces of Central Luzon, your ancestors had a deeper connection with the mythologies of Apungalura, a deeper connection with the mighty powerful Diwata that heralds a new beginning, Apungalura. Actually, one of my Kales, one of my Chris or Keris that I've shown before in my previous videos, actually has a carving of Apungalura along with his siblings, the Nagaraja, the divine dragon kings that rule the open seas. So to learn more about the colorful mythologies of our ancestors, check out the links up here or down below. So shout out to Agu Mansinu Pansingsing Incorporated, the Center for Kapampangan Cultural Heritage and Research Institute led by Bapang Mai Panglinan. Dakal pong salamat King Ega Nagarangagawa New for safeguarding our culture, for enriching our culture and teaching our culture to the next generation. Dakal pong salamat luwid kayo. And to learn more about the histories of our ancestors, the untold histories of our ancestors, check out the links up here or down below for more playlists about the colorful cultures and histories of our people. Check out the links below. And please keep an eye out for my future books about the forgotten past of our people, of our ancestors, like the one I'm writing right now about the forgotten past of the Luzones. And please, please don't be afraid to share more mythologies from your own cultures. Like I've mentioned earlier, in the Philippines, in Southeast Asia, we have diverse and colorful roots, but interwoven roots. So please let us know in the comments below if you have similar mythologies from your own ancestors. And once again, maraming maraming salamat po to everyone who donated to my holiday slash birthday fundraiser for the families, for the communities affected by the recent typhoons in the Philippines. And if you haven't made a donation yet, it's not too late to help. Check out the links up here or down below for more information and for the links to make a donation today. Marami salamat po. Dakal pong salamat. And that is it for me today. If you Hello, yeah, <laughs> cool. So I hope you liked the video. That was a video I made last year. There's also a Tagalog version of that video that you can find on my channel on YouTube. So um, youtube.com slash Kirby Aralio, just my full name. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you, well, today is really just to me answering your questions um, in the chat, um, both on Facebook and in YouTube, wherever you're watching. And again, um, say hi, wherever you're watching. Um, someone was watching from Alameda. Hey, hello. Hi, I know where that is. <laughs> Shout out sa inyo. Um, cool. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions about this mythology, let me know. Um, and while I'm waiting for your questions, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Jabi ni Johnny, it was re really educating. Maraming salamat. Oh, cool. Somebody's from Elk Grove, California. Hi, Elk Grove is just down there. <laughs> Hello. Oh, cool, from Massachusetts, Joshua. Oh, wow, we have someone from Shanghai. Hi, Herbie. Sounds like Kirby. <laughs> Hello, from greetings from Shanghai. And then again, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, cool, dami pala natin from different parts of the world, or universe, rather. <laughs> okay, ang unang tanong. Okay, is there an opposite character that would fight Galura? Um, not that I'm aware of. I might be mistaken, but from as far as I know, there's no opposite that is, you know, antagonizing or, or that would fight Galura because Apo Galura in Kamapangan is not seen as necessarily evil that you need to fight. Um, he's seen as someone or as, as a this deity, this Diwata, this god that comes to cleanse the community, the society of all the wrongdoings so that the humans like us can restart and start start have a fresh start. So he wasn't really seen as this evil 
um, being. So if there's a typhoon that was brought by Apong Galurai who was not seen as um, something that you fight. It's seen as like, you know, <laughs> um, if anything, the the ones you should fight are the ones who are in power because it was seen as a sign that the heavens, the Diwatas, are not um, happy with the way humans are running the society in on here on Earth. So that's how they saw it. So um, walang, as far as I know, walang um, kalaban si Apong Galora in terms of you know stopping him from bringing typhoons from the Pacific Ocean. Hopefully that answers the questions from Clarel Pope. Um, hello from Valenzuela. Hello. And then John Suva from Pasig City. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and again, today is tonight and the rest of my live stream this month, this year, 2021, will be for the benefit of NAFCON's binding hand response to Typhoon on debt in the Philippines. Um, so I'm just going to share something from NAFCON. Asan ah, yung share screen natin? Ayan, sana this time it works. Ayan. So just a quick update sa mga hindi pa nakaka... So for those who may not know, there's a typhoon in the Philippines that, that really devastated. This is a picture from Surigao City, a famous um, tourist destination in Mindanao. Um, so a few days ago only, ayan. Just to show you the devastation. Here are some pictures from our partners with NAFCON, our partners from the Citizens Disaster Response Center, a grassroots um, alliance or a group of grassroots organizations responding to disasters in the Philippines. So there, there's these pictures are from our partners on the ground, mismo sa, sa Pilipinas. Um, this is from Southern Leyte. So shout out sa ating mga sa, sa Leyte. Um, this was from December 16th. Barangay Hindagan, St. Bernard, Southern Leyte. Just to show you what's going on in the Philippines if you haven't seen it yet in your news or social media. And then some some updates from our, our partners. Um, so a total of 81,610 families or 30, 305,671 individuals are displaced and are staying in and outside evacuation centers across um, Visayas and Mindanao. So this is as of December 18, 2021. So a few days ago. Um, um, this is uh, the death toll. The, uh, the one I saw just right before our live stream is over 300 now. So sadly, and the death toll is continue to rise, continuing to rise. Um, and then here's some more pictures. Here are some more pictures from Barangay Hindagan, um, in Saint Bernard, Southern Leyte, from our partners on the ground. Yeah. So reports from Surigao City that you know they say that everything is damaged, as you can see from the pictures. Um, even the provincial disasters office said that you know it was destroyed. And it looks like you know there was they were they were hit by a bomb. So that's how um, bad and devastated. Besides, in Mindanao is and Palawan also also hit by this um, um this strong typhoon. Um, so for those in the U.S. um who, who would like to join us tomorrow night at um 4 p.m. Hawaii, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, um we're, we're doing more of the situation report from the ground on what's going on in the Philippines with NAFCON USA. So join us. This is the flyer i'll share it on my facebook page then if you want to join us and learn more how you can help our kamabayans back in the philippines so yeah so this is just the reason i'm just i just ah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> excuse me i'm just sharing why i'm doing this live space my so our kamabayans yes yeah, sharing can you see me again <clears throat> excuse me let me find my water <laughs> So, um, from the comments, I mean, J. Amo from YouTube, who is watching from YouTube, yung lola ko, <coughs> excuse me, may kinakanta siya tuwing bagyo, inaalay nila ito sa higanting ibon para matigil ang malakas na hangin. Nakalimutan ko na yung kata from Mindoro, yung lola ko. So, for those who don't speak Tagalog, J. is saying that his grandma, or their grandma, um, sings a song, um, a traditional song whenever there's a typhoon that they offer the song to a giant bird um, to stop um, this strong typhoon. And that her grandma who sings this is from Indora, but but um, Jay forgot the title of the song. Um, so perhaps there's a connection between Mindoro and and the Kapampanga mythology because it was you know typhoon, as as you can see in Kapampanga mythology was brought by a huge bird, a gigantic diwata, a god of the god of typhoons, or not necessarily typhoons, the god of um, from the Eastern Ocean brings typhoons. Si Apungalura. Yeah, salamat sa pag-share. Thank you for sharing, Jay. So if you have anything else to share, 
for those who are watching, um, anything that you may remember from your culture or your background or your families, guy ng KJ from his lola about typhoons in the Philippines. Yeah, salamat. <coughs> Hi, K. Helena from California. Um, hello, K. Ian from Pampanga. Um, hello, then sa sa oh Samoa. <laughs> hello, K. Melchor from Samoa. Wow, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where typhoons come from. <laughs> hello. Thank you for joining us. Hi to my distant cousin Norma from um. From oh, I was gonna say Norma is a descendant then of Raja Suleiman of Manila. So shout out, <laughs> cool. Maya pagat panapon kay um pent Philos. <laughs> Did I say that right? I'm so sorry if I didn't. Um, let me know in the comments. Mabuhay kay Lester from Bulacan. Yeah. So thank you for watching. And again, this is a fundraiser. So for those who are able to donate to help our Kababayans, check out the links in the description below or go to the tiny URL, uh, tinyurl.com slash 21 typhoons to help us raise funds. Speaking of speaking, speaking of raising funds, we're gonna check right now kung na ang ating na raise since Napcon launched our typhoon on that fundraiser the other day. This is my first time using StreamYard, so that's in the shot. Ayan. So if you can see the screen, can you see the screen? Cool. Um, how do I full screen this? Ayun. So from the web, this is the live count. So when you donate, the numbers update live on Napcon's website. So so far we've raised two thousand nine hundred seventy-five dollars. Out of our hundred thousand goal to raise funds, ka para sa ating mga babayan sa lahat ng bagyo sa Visayas and Mindanao um, by Typhoon Odette. So yeah, so two thousand nine hundred seventy-five. So three percent. So we still have ninety-seven percent more to go until January to raise money for our babayans back at home. Yeah. So salamat again for those who donated and for those joining us. And I'm also gonna donate whatever I'm earning from the ads on this stream today on YouTube because they monetize on our channel. So luckily, it's monetized. So whatever I'm earning today, I'll be donating directly to Napcon's um, by any hand typhoon response campaign. Um, just fun fact, pala um, with typhoon response for Napcon when Typhoon Haiyan happened back in 2014, I was still a student in college. Um, that's um, I helped uh, organize our local um, fundraiser for NAFCON, and we were able to raise at UC Davis alone. Sa campus lang na UC Davis when I was a student, we were able to raise almost fifteen thousand um, dollars that went straight to NAFCON and went straight to the grassroots organizations responding to, to the needs of our kababayans in the Visayas during Typhoon Haiyan or Typhoon Yolanda. Um, and overall, NAFCON overall the US raised over a million dollars to for our kababayans. So. If we did it back then, we can still do it again. So, maraming maraming salama sa lahat ng donate so far. And please donate if you can. Again, the website to donate is tinyurl.com slash 2021typhoon. And you can, you can also find it in the comments below or in the video description. Um, and then again, um, this live stream will be... I'll be doing this live stream today, tomorrow, and um, Wednesday or Thursday. And this next raise funds. Okay, Sabini Clarel Pope, my mom would tell me about Aswangs. Yes, <laughs> Aswangs. Um, did you see the Netflix show Stress? Yes, I did uh, watch Stress. I finished it in one um, in a day or two. Um, and yes, Stress. <laughs> I have a series of uh, breakdowns on Stress. I haven't finished it yet, but I, I broke down a few of the episodes from Stress from a historical perspective, or uh, from my perspective as a historian and cultural editor, sharing what I know about art culture. So if you haven't seen it yet, it's on my YouTube channel. Just search Pinoy Historian Reacts to Trece. Salamat. Okay, ano pa ba? Tala, ang daming comment. Sunod-sunod. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, Ate Cheryl Che. Yes, this is my first live stream. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Hi din kay Ki Gonzalez from Porak, Pampanga. Kumusta? Kumusta na ka, Maya Paldo? Um, kay Wolf, Wolf Ramstein, Stein. <laughs> si Bakunawa po ba ay isang nagaraja? So to find out the answer, stay tuned kasi next Wednesday or Wednesday night here in California, Thursday afternoon, Thursday noon sa Pilipinas or Thursday morning sa Pilipinas, I'll be talking with someone, I'll be live streaming with someone who knows a lot more about Bakunawa than me. So um, si Ate Ligaya, the Pinay writer, also known as the Pinay writer, um, and she's more knowledgeable than me about Bakunawa. So she can probably answer if Bakunawa is a Nagaraja. So stay tuned on my uh, next live, not next, but the day after. So Wednesday night, California, Thursday morning, the Philippines will be answering any questions about Bakunawa and, <clears throat> excuse me, other dragons, mythological dragons in the Philippines because Bakunawa is not the only one. And then, yeah. And any moon-eating um, creatures in Philippine mythologies from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So we'll be discussing that um, on Wednesday night in California, Thursday morning sa Pilipinas. So stay tuned. Cool. Um, excuse me, ang aking throat ay hindi... 100% well. So welcome for those who are joining us. Again, this is my first live stream and I'm, I'll be answering any of your questions regarding my, any of my recent videos or any questions about the Typhoon Mythology video that I just shared. <clears throat> Hello then, K. Chris, and thank you. Have a blessed day, Dean Sayo. So Joshua's question, just watched your Spanish naming video. The vast majority of my family all have the middle name Salazar, which was explained to me as someone's maiden name. Was that due to the Spanish implementation? Um, so middle name in the Philippines is different from middle name in, in other countries like the U.S. So middle name in the U.S. is um, your second name in the Philippines. And in the Philippines, middle names are usually um, the maiden name of your, of your or the last name of your mother. So technically in the U.S., my middle name is not Tayag, but in the Philippines, my middle name is Tayag because that's my mom's last name. So that's a kind of a different uh, situation wherever, depending on where you are. Um, um, I'm not sure if Salazar was in the um, Catalogo, Alphabetico Filipino, or Alphabetic Catalogo, Alphabetico de Apelidos, or the catalog of uh, the alphabetical catalog of last names in the Philippines that was imposed to the Filipinos in the Philippines. Um, so I'm not sure if Salazar is there, but if it is, then it's most likely because of the Spanish law that was implemented in the Philippines. So hopefully Joshua answered your question. If not, um, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to clarify some more. Uh, Tanongi Fudera 4. Ano ang mga sinaunang uh, recipe na kinahin ng mga Filipino without influence in Spanish. So the question is, what are some recipes from ancient Philippines or ancient recipes from the Philippines without Spanish influence? Um, uh, this is, um, well, adobo is actually a uh, an indigenous dish in the Philippines. It has indigenous roots in Bisha, regardless of the name, because the name itself is Spanish, adoba, from the word adoba, adobo. The dish itself is indigenous to the Philippines. So that alone tells us that, you know, that dish has been served in the Philippines before colonialism. So it has roots from the different, um, or it, had, it has roots from pre-colonial Philippines. Another one that I can think of right now is Kilayin in Kapampangan or Kilawin in Tagalog, um, which is close to ceviche in South America. This is also a dish that is pre-colonial and indigenous to the Philippines. Um, another one that I can think of is actually sisig. So for those who do not know, um, who are not Kamapan, who are not, who may not be aware of the roots of sisig. Sisig is actually a pre-colonial dish. Um, that you know, sisig is actually not just the pork 
sizzling pork that everybody is familiar with today around the world. Sisig is a wide variety of, of um, different dishes because sisig is actually a term that describes the preparation of the, the food. So it's to mince the, or chop the, the food, the meat or the fruit. And um, um, what is English? <laughs> so you season it with um, something sour and something salty and balance it. Um, so Sisig, um, I actually made a video about Sisig many, many years ago. So if you can find it on my YouTube channel, it explains it better there than I'm explaining it now. But Sisig is also another dish that has indigenous or pre-colonial pre -colonial roots from the Philippines nah, um, that we've always had. And actually, for those who do not know, Sisig has been a, um, what is what do you call this? You know, in pre-colonial traditions of Kapampangan people, sisig was somewhat of a sacred dish that was only reserved for mothers and women who are expecting a baby, so pregnant women. So it used to be just food for the mothers and expecting mothers. Um, but now it's, you know, universalized and uh, now available to everybody. So, yeah. Salamat sa inyong tanong. Thank you for asking. I hope I gave a good answer. If not, I'm also open to expanding more and answering more of your questions. Um, cool. Hello, Christopher. Christopher said, my legal middle name is Sugatan, which is my mother's main name. I forgot which province Sugatans are, are native from. So if you know, please let me know in the comments. But Sugatan is also an indigenous um, last name in the Philippines. Okay, um, Admiral Akbar. Oh, who? <laughs> I know this character. Um, hey, Kirby, I recently learned about the character in Filipino pop culture called Darna. How big is she in the Philippines? Darna is huge in the Philippines. So it's been huge since the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so Darna um, is actually older than Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, so Darna is a superhero from the Philippines um, that has been around for decades, again, since the 50s. Um, and it's, it's huge. So there's a ton of movies every decade there's uh, several movies made about darna and just just recently if i'm not mistaken just today or yesterday there was a trailer of the new darna tv series that was released um or teaser for the new tv series so it's always i know highly anticipated um tv series or movies in the philippines so yeah darna is huge um and darna is perhaps the most well-known the most popular superhero from philippine pop culture so see no excited who's excited to see darna let us know in the comments below <laughs> Thanks for your question, Admiral Akbar. Uh, comment from Claro Clara Pope. Thank you for doing this and helping the Philippine people. I hope you feel better. <laughs> Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. And I do hope I feel better too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, any more questions? Let me know in the comments. And voila. <laughs> cool. I'm back. <clears throat> From Guinness. Aristo Kuya, I'm writing a novel inspired by pre-colonial Philippine society. And my biggest challenge is researching. What's your advice in gathering info and sources when it comes to pre-colonial history and mythologies? Um, my first advice, ad advice, <laughs> my accent is coming out. My first advice is for you to, um, I guess, decide on um, which culture you're pulling from or which culture you're going to be taking inspiration from in writing this novel. Because again, the Philippines is very diverse. You know, as there's 187 languages in the Philippines um, and over 100 um, different et ethnic groups in the Philippines. So each ethnicity in the Philippines has, you know, has their own um, traditions and mythologies and history. So if you're if you're really, um, you know, serious about this project, um, I guess my advice would be, you know, deciding, being decisive on where you're going to be pulling from, because that would also inform you on in how you're going to do your research. Um, and the difficulty of the research will also be reflected by your chosen um, um, focus. Um, 
So, for example, the sources about Kapampangan culture is not the same sources as you would find about Visayan culture or the cultures from Mindanao and the histories from the different parts of the Philippines. So, again, that's my first advice. Um, second advice is to look at um, primary sources dead, um, but don't just take it as, you know, black and white facts. Um, look at primary sources and um, analyze it. Have a critical lens in analyzing it. You know, don't just take it for granted because, um, you know, these are written for a reason. Um, from a from a different perspective, um, so yeah, so hopefully those answered your question, um, and hopefully that that helps you write your novel. And feel free to um, reach out to me. I'll type my email for those who are interested in reaching out to me. <clears throat> cool. Um, but yeah, so in terms of primary sources, one good, um, always a good source is the Boxer Codex. <clears throat> It has images from um, the 1590s of how Filipinos or people from the Philippines, they weren't called Filipinos yet, um, people from the Philippines look like um, how their dresses are, how colorful the costumes, not costume, I don't like saying costumes, how colorful the traditional clothing are and then, you know, how much gold we had. Um, and yeah, so first advice again is to focus on which culture you're going to be taking inspiration from and focusing on. And then from there you can um, kind of gauge your way and how to find resources about those specific cultures and history. So, salamat then. Thank you and good luck. Best of luck to Gwyneth in your um, exciting project, a pre-colonial novel about Philippine society. Let us know then. Um, keep us a, keep uh, keep us posted on your project. Salamat. So Miguel Gabriel asked, oh, cool, my, two of my brother's name. I know my brother's name is Miguel. The other brother I have is um, named Gabriel. So Miguel and Gabriel, it's like, feels like I'm talking to my brothers, my younger brothers. Um, so Kuya, why is that there's a lot of Filipinos who have the same surnames even if they are not related by blood? So a lot of the families in the Philippines, if you saw my recent video, were assigned last names from this um, book, this catalogo, alfabetico. The apelidos or this alphabetical catalog of surnames that the Spaniards imposed in the Philippines. So some families did, um, you know, choose uh, by accident um, the same last name from different parts of the Philippines. So I hope that answers your questions. Um, yeah. So maybe, like for example, there's there's a couple of Villanuevas in Ilocos, and there's also a couple of Villanuevas in Mindanao. So in my, you know, their ancestors are not exactly related, but somehow their ancestors chose the same last name from the catalogo. Um, sabi ni normal, so normal. Um, normal is sharing. Sa amin sa Subaden tribe, pag may isa ko na, they used to, they use our tribe boklog, uh, BB rituals. They believe in respect the nature spirit and the diwata magbabaya. Apolaki na pugaruda is related puba. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not as familiar with the Subaden mythology as I'd like to. So, this is something I can dig deeper and learn more of how, how related um, diwata magbabaya to Apolaki and Garuda. I mean, Apolaki is, you know, similar to Sinuquan of Kapampangan culture. And Garuda is Galura. So, salamat for sharing. Um, this is something I can look deeper, deeper into. Uh, la, la, la. So, this is a controversial one. So, thank you, Kirby. She recently made... Um, um, class saw a form from the National Housing Authority of the Philippines, and they called Pampanga today as Northern Tagalog region. This is actually very sad that the Kapampanga language is being, you know, is, this is what a lot of Kapampangas are saying when they're saying that the Kapampanga language is dying because you can see that even in official public documents of the Philippine government, they're calling Pampanga, which is the indigenous homeland of the Kapampangan people, they're now starting to call it Northern Tagalog region, which is kind of problematic. Um, so, yeah, that is very problematic. Um, so, to the National Housing Authority, please get your act together because Pampanga is not a Tagalog-speaking province. Um, 
this is not to sow divisions in the Philippines. It's just to recognize that, you know, it's like, anyways. <laughs> um, but I can probably reflect more on this issue and share more in future live streams if you want me to answer. Oh, oops, that's the same one. This is a comment from Ella Estrera. Hello, Kuya Kirby. Di pa ako nakasa. Oh, painting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but significant. Oh, okay. Um, Naabuta kami ni Odette dito sa buhon. Hopefully, you're doing, your family's doing well. I'm so sorry na na-apektuhan kayo ng bagyo. Um, hopefully, you're doing well. And um, again, this this live stream is my way of helping din. Um, so, maraming maraming salamat. I hope you're doing well. Um, thank you for joining us. And don't worry about the painting. <laughs> don't worry about the painting. It can be for next year if you want, as long as you're okay and your family is okay. Um, okay lang yan. Salamat. Um, thank you, then, Kay John. Thank you for learning <laughs> and my videos. Is, you know, I share it to spread more knowledge. So thank you. Ta -ta -da, there's a lot of comments I'm missing. Huh. <clears throat> um, in Sky eighty eight. And Sky. Um, so, hey, Kirby, thank you for all your videos educating our Kababayans. Can you speak on our pre-colonial healing practices? I really want to learn more about the Babaylan, Hilot, Albolario, pardon my spelling. Um, yes, but not, I'm going to save that maybe tomorrow's topic because tomorrow my guest in my live stream is an author of the, uh, re, uh, re, uh, her recent book is about um, healing, um, or, you know, healing traditions, Filipino healing traditions. So, it's a children's book, actually, so you can learn more. Maybe tomorrow we can address that topic. So if you're back here tomorrow, same time, um, we'll be talking. We can talk more about that with our guests. Ate Justine Villanueva from Sagawa River Press, or Sawaga River, River Press. I actually have her children's book here somewhere. Oh, no, it's far away from me. But yeah, she publishes children's book. Uh, she's from Bukidnon, so she can also share more about um, her indigenous culture and healing traditions. Salamat. Thank you for asking. Okay, Johnny's question. Um, hi, Korea, about the history in Northern Sabah. Um, who really own it, who owns it um, based on history? Thanks in advance. That's going to be a topic of a future video or two. Um, so it's, it's a very complicated topic. <laughs> um, so I cannot really address and answer the, the There's no short answer to this, to, to this question. That's re the reason why it's still a conflict in Southeast Asia. Um, but I'll... I'm going to do my best in, in exploring this topic in future videos and give justice um, to the to the history, the real history of um, what is now Sabah in Malaysia. Oh, no, something fell. Sorry. Um, yeah, but for, for those who do not know Sabah um, or what is now Sabah, part of a huge chunk of what, in, what is now Sabah used to be part of the Sultanate of Sulu that was leased to, to the British and um, now it's part of Malaysia. So it's a very controversial topic. I actually wrote a college paper in this when I was um, doing college. I studied international um, law. And this is one of the papers I wrote, uh, or top paper topics I wrote about. So yeah, it's it's a complicated topic that we can address in a future video. It, they, it needs more research then. Uh... Okay, this is a good question. I don't have an answer, but hello. You've probably done a video on pre-colonial history, which interests me. Also, I know there are several undiscovered archaeological sites that we need to explore. Sad that we can we can fully discover our own territory. Yes, there's a lot of archaeological sites that we can still explore in the Philippines. Not everything has been explored yet. Um, even places that we've explored in the past have been neglected. And uh, for example, there was a lot, there used to be a lot of archaeological sites in Pampanga, but now there's none. Um, 
it hasn't it was not protected and we've lost a lot of the archaeological sites in Pampanga like in Porac so there used to be uh, you know there's a lot of different archaeological sites in the Philippines that sadly uh, because of the lack of funding and the lack of su lack of support um, have been um, neglected because our you know sadly there's not much support from the government or from the the community in the you know the lack of understanding of how important these archaeological sites are so sadly a lot of them have been um, neglected or haven't yet been explored yet so there's still a lot more to dig deeper video like I said in my videos there's a lot that we we literally have to dig deeper um, to find more thank you for your comment Kuya Kirby, I want to ask if the origin of our practice, which is Pagmamano, or you know, when you bless with your hand, um, is it pre-colonial? So, good question. It's actually pre-colonial. It's a, the practice actually shared. Hindi lang Filipino, not just in the Philippines that they do this this tradition. You can also find it in Malaysia and in, in Brunei. Um, um, and it's also uh, to, <laughs> this is also a topic on my to-do list. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna share too much in today's video, but I'll do that in the future video. But yes. Pagmamano or what we call Pagmamano today, um, or what we call in Kamapangan as Teklod or Pagmamano in Tagalog is a pre-colonial tradition that survived colonialism. Even though today, Mano, we think of it as the hand because Mano means hand in Spanish. So it is not um, unique to the Philippines. It is unique to Southeast Asia, but not to the Philippines. Um, it's something that we share with our um, pre-colonial neighbors. Or, I mean, it's a pre-colonial tradition that we share with our neighbors, like in Brunei. Salamat sa yung question. What kind of things did they find in Pampanga in terms of ar archaeological findings? Question from Irwin. Um, there they found, the, for example, the Kandaba ads, which is this um, boat making tool that was found in Kandaba, is 5,000 years old. So that tells us how long people in Pampanga have been making boats. Um, and it's older than the pyramid, or as old as the pyramids in Egypt. Um, um, there's a lot of um, bronze. Um, oh, the, the thing, according to um, 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 the National Museum's head archaeologist, um, uh, the, the problem in, in, in Pampanga archaeological sites is too is the, not just the neglect that, that because of the lack of funding, was also yung lupa. The, the land in Pampanga, the earth in Pampanga is very acidic. So sadly, um, over the centuries, this acidity in the, in, in the um, ground on, on, in the earth that is in, found in Mapanga, um, damage a lot of the archaeological findings in Mapanga over the century. So it's kind of harder than, as opposed to, or in comparison to other sites um, in the Philippines. So if you want to learn more about this, um, I, I'm, there's, there used to be a lecture that they used to do at Sinupan Sing Sing in, in Angela City about um, archaeological findings in, in Mapanga um, and um, look into the work of Dr. Eusebio Dizon or Bong Dizon um, of the, 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 the premier archaeologist in the Philippines today. So he, he's part of the National Museum of the Philippines and UP Diliman. And he, and he does a lot of archaeological work in the Philippines. He's the, you know, he knows a lot more than you, than I do. So as if you want to learn more, look into his work. But yeah. Um, there's a lot of different archaeological findings in Mapanga, different, um, um, what do you call this, jewelries that were found, tools that were found, sites that were found, um, um, even things that, um, for example, for those who do not know, a lot of the towns in Pampanga today were actually pre-colonial um, fortified towns. So Manila was not the only um, fortified walled city in the Philippines before, before colonialism. So there's Betis in Pampanga, Lubao in Pampanga, Cainta in what is now Rizal province. So these were all um, fortified walled cities be before colonialism. So even these existing towns and cities across the Philippines, you know, there's still a lot underneath that we haven't really you know, dug <laughs> and learned more about. Salamat for your question. Yeah, message ulit ni Ella. Um, thank you po. The Go His Blood and Bravery lives on in us, Kuya. Padayon lang. Tama, padayon lang sa ating mga kababayan sa Visayas. Um, stay strong. We're doing everything we can to help you. And yes, the Go ni the Gohoy. Hello. 
Hello kay ZJ from Davao City in Mindanao. Hello. Kumusta? Um Question again from Grinette. Do you know any knowledge about Bicolano history, mythology? I'm half Bicolana, but I think all stories passed down to me as child were post-colonial or Spanish imprinted stories. Um, I'd like, um, I, I don't know as much as I'd like um, about Bicolano history, but it's also something that I'm also interested in um, um, digging deeper. Um, but yeah, I haven't really dug as much as I can <laughs> about Bicol's uh, history, but hopefully in the future I can have a guest then. It's a live stream. who can share us more about um, Bicolano culture and history and mythologies. Um, but yes, uh, if you do not know yet, Bahunawa is also part of um, Bicol's mythology. Yeah, and we'll learn more again about Bakunawa on Thursday night, uh, Thursday morning sa Pilipinas, Wednesday night dito sa California. Salamat for your question. Again, question from Irwin. Do you think they, they will find more Hindu Buddhist or dragon sculptures or artifacts in the near future? Hopefully they do. <laughs> that would be amazing if they find more. And again, um, a lot, we still have to dig uh, deeper in our own, you know, backyards in the Philippines and um, sadly, then uh, over the years, over the centuries, a lot of were looted out of the Philippines and were sold in the black market. So, so for those who have those in their collection, please return it to our national museum. Uh, da, da, da. Cool. Um, wait long. I just need to take a quick water break. <laughs> so yes, just sending your questions in the chat. Uh, we have a few more, uh, maybe 20 something more minutes. Uh, and then we'll say good night for tonight or good morning <laughs> or wherever you are in the world. Um, but yeah, we have about 29 more minutes tonight or today in this live stream. And again, I'll come, I'm coming back tomorrow, same time. And then a little early on Wednesday or Thursday. <clears throat> um, comment from Key Gonzalez on YouTube, hoping you could teach us more about the traditional writing of the Kapampanga people, which is Kulita, and I will learn, learn it so bad. Thinking God bless more Kuya Kirby. I have a book somewhere. Oh, where is it? Can somebody borrow it? Great. It's not here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So for those who are interested in learning about Kulitan, if you can find this book in the Philippines in your local libraries, um, check it out. It's a book by my granduncle, Michael um, Piemont Pangilinan. Um, it's a very intensive book about Kapampangan history and Kapampangan traditional writings. So um, sadly, this is out of print, so you cannot buy a new one. But if you can find it in your library in the Philippines, check it out. Um, yeah, so Kulitan, the indigenous Kapampangan script. Um, Juan Antonio asks, um, Hello, Kuya, but Hala and Apong Sinequan are the same or different? They're different. Um, so um, Apong Sinequan is specifically the god of the sun in, the Fili in, in Kapampangan mythology of the Philippines, and Batala is the supreme being in Tagalog mythology. So they're um, um, very different. Um, they're not the same. Even though Sinequan eventually became the supreme be supreme deity or supreme diwata in Kapampangan mythology, but he is not the same as um, Batala. Um, I don't know how to explain it more, but maybe in the future I can uh, uh, deepen this explanation of the difference of Apong Sinukwan and Batala. Um, so Apong Sinukwan or Apong Sinukwan is closer to the um, what what uh, people in Pangasinan call Dapulaki um, or in Tagalog culture. Then they also adopted this the concept or the deity of Apulaki, and that's similar to Apong Sinukwan uh, more than Batala. Um, okay, is there any influences that some of some of the countries that inhabited the Philippines or you know had interactions with the Philippines took back with them? Spices, monster arts, fabrics. Um, there is a theory that um, um, 
um, what do you call this? Karate? Was it karate? Uh, martial arts? <laughs> was it karate? Um, let me just Google it really quick. Yes, so there is a, a viral video that went around last year, around this time, November, um, of, of how or karate is, you might have been um, from the Philippines because of the similarities and the roots of it. Um, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of in, uh, different exchanges. Actually, um, a video that I'm planning on doing is the exchange or the connection between Japan and the Philippines. It might be a series of videos or just one video. I haven't decided yet about the exchanges of culture between the Philippines and Japan because of trade and 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 politics and war. Um, but one of it is that, uh, you know, because samurai um, in, in Japan, the samurai, um, are, they're famous for this um, very unique, specific um, dye of indigo um, in Japan that, you know, is synonymous with samurai culture. But that dye was actually imported from Pampanga and Manila. So um, um, indigo was one of the biggest export of what used to be the kingdom of Luzon to the Japanese. And that's uh, uh, one of the um, influence of, of the Philippines to Japan. Um, another one is, um, um, what do you call this? The, the, the pots or the, the little tea um, pottery that they have in Japan um, that, that help shape their, their tea uh, traditions in Japan was also from the Philippines. They're called um, Rusun jars or Luzon jars. Um, so those are some examples. Um, and in terms of fabrics, I read the research that I still have to, again, look deeper into. There's a research on how um, um, ikat and tie-dye, or tie-dyeing and ikat and um, what I call this batik um, was um, originally originated from what is now um, Borneo and Mindanao. So there's a lot that we still have to dig deeper. Um, I'm not as, as, as well-versed in these topics, but... Yeah, <laughs> tune in, especially for the Japanese um, cultural connection between the Philippines and, Jap and Japan. Halo Halo is from Japan. Thank you for your question. Jed Sese, do you have a video about Ernest or Kali? Not yet. Hopefully, I wanted to do it, but I wanted to do it um, in the Philippines when I, next time I visit. And so visiting the old masters in the Philippines and talking to them. Thank you. Uh, question from um, Ray Kolyat. Um, Hi, do ancient Philippines already travel to different countries before the, our country was colonized? Yes. Um, our people from the Philippines have been traveling um, across the different parts of Southeast Asia, as far as, you know, the Pacific Islands and even India and um um, Northern Africa, Madagascar. Um, these were all uh, places that our ancestors have visited, have um, connections with. Um, and yes, we, our people have been traveling um, all over the world. <laughs> Actually, uh, a joke that I used to make in my video is that our people have been sailing across the seas way before Europeans even learned how to sail outside Europe. <laughs> that was a joke that I used to make in my videos because, you know, we've been traveling around the world. Uh, for example, a lot of people think that Magellan discovered the Philippines in 1521, um, but he was already in Malacca in what is now Malaysia in 1511, so 10 years before he was in Cebu. Um, and in Malacca, there was a huge community of Luzones or people from what is now um, Central Luzon and Southern Luzon who were there. So, um, and they were very active in, in, in the politics and the economy of Malacca. So, um, if you want to learn more, Ray, um, I have a, uh, several videos about the different pre-colonial um, Luzones who were in different parts of Asia during this time. Salamat. So Christopher Fornesa said, I just read today how the Ryukwan kingdom that is now part of Japan had trade with the kingdom of Luzon as well as Japan and China. Yes, they did. We had a lot, a lot. We also have a strong connection with with the Ryukyu Islands. So, question from Lu Lu Luis Cadionco, Sir Kirby, ano 
po ang katumbas ng Lacan sa Visayas at Mindanao if meron man. So what is the equivalent of a Lacan in the Visayas and Mindanao? So it depends on the culture or the kingdom of, or the ethnic group you're talking about. Um, so Lacan in, in pre-colonial Kapampangan societies were the supreme, you know, the paramount king um, in Tondo. Um, and and the paramount king in the Visayas, for example, in Cebu would be the Raja of Cebu. So it's the same as the Raja of Cebu, same rank. Or if you're talking about Sulu, then it would be Sultan. Um, um, yeah, so it's, it's the paramount ruler. Um, so it depends on the kingdom or the pre-colonial society you're talking about. So again, if it's the Visayas like Cebu or, or um, Butuan in Mindanao, it would be Raja. But if you're talking about a Muslim um, society or kingdom or sultanate like Sulu, it would be the Sultan. So it's different, different um, by for different culture and traditions. Neil Angel Aquino, Maya Padato Dato Kirby, Maya Padato Dato Kirby, Maya Padato Muna Mantiaka. Thank you for saying hi and good day. Um, John Suva asked, Kirby, are you going to have a video about the gods and goddesses of the Philippines? Yes. Um, I'm trying to map it out and how I'm going to do it because there's a ton of different um, deities or gods and goddesses in the different cultures of the Philippines. So um, I want to give it justice then, uh, you know present them as best as I can. So yes, um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna, it's going to be one whole video because it's going to be difficult, very difficult to put them in all in one video because there's a lot. And again, it's different per culture in the Philippines. Ta -da -da -da. Cool. We have about 10 minutes left in our live stream today. So thank you again for joining. Um, again, this live stream is a fundraiser then for um, NAFCON's by in response to Typhoon Odette in the Philippines. So if you're able to donate, um, tinyurl.com slash 2021 typhoons. And these donations will go directly um, through NAFCON to our, our grassroots partners in the Philippines. Um, and yeah, like the CDRC. So shout out to all our friends in, in the Visayas doing um, relief work in Visayas and Mindanao. Okay, um, Michael, watching from Batangas. Hey, thank you for watching. Salamat. I have families and roots in Batangas. There's a, a Aralio who used to live in Batangas too. And they, some of my cousins still live in Batangas then. <laughs> yeah. And my as well, off topic, do you work out? Yes. Um, uh, I mix up my routines. I don't have a specific routine that I follow. I used to do calisthenics when I used to live with um, calisthenics masters. <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with calisthenics, um, it's a body weight workout and it's very effective. It's actually the most effective workout routine I've done over the years is calisthenics. Um, and when I used to live with some calisthenics experts and trainers in Davis, my college friends, um, uh, I used to do calisthenics almost every day, but now I haven't. <laughs> So yeah, that's when my body looked the best when I was doing calisthenics. Um, Juan Antonio asks, does Mount Alaya have mythology? So for those who do not know, Mount Alaya is Bundok Alaya, which is known for most of us as uh, Mount Arayat. And yes, <clears throat> excuse me, Mount Arayat is actually the center of Kamapangan mythology. It's the home of Bapong Sinokwan, the sun god in pre-colonial Kamapangan culture. Um, so it's it's a very um, special and sacred mountain in pre-colonial Kamampangan tradition. So yes, there's a lot of mythologies that involves Mount Arayat and its its um, counterpart on the other side, Mount Pinatubo. Um, ang wikang Tagalog po ba nung time ni Raja Sulaiman ay pareho sa sina salita ngayon o malaki na pinagbago? Um, hopefully, I can make a video about this. And for this topic, I would rather um, consult with the linguist. Um, but yeah, the question is, is the Tagalog from the time of Radio Suleiman same or different from the Tagalog uh, that is spoken today? In, some, in many ways, it is different because there's a lot of um, influence in Spanish and English that is now in Tagalog. <clears throat> you, can, you cannot even hear a full sentence in Tagalog anymore in, or you know, a formal Tagalog sentence in TV in the Philippines. It's, usually mixed with English. Um, but yeah, um, it is quite different, but in a lot of ways, it's actually the same. Um, so it's kind of complicated. There's, there's some phrases that are exactly the same and there's some phrases that are, you know, are no longer used. Um, but yes, Tibur Show in Brunel. Hopefully in the future, I can make a video with, about it and, you know, have um, 
someone who is a linguist and more, you know a better or a more someone who knows better than me in terms of linguistics who can share more. And yes, my partner says every penny counts. Please donate. Um, hello, then, kay um, Leonardo Jose from Santa Rosa, Laguna. Hello, kumusta? Maki Lance Ginto from Pampanga, I guess. Hello, Kabalen. Proud cooking channel mo. Dakala salamat. <laughs> Dakala salamat kay kakang suporta. Maki. Gintu means gold. <laughs> um, from Agusan del Sur. Wow, very close to, to Surigao. Um, Pangkalye. Pangkalye ang guitarista. So hopefully, Pangkalye ang guitarista, you're doing well and your family is doing well in Agusan del Sur. Hopefully, hindi kayo masyadong naapektuhan ng bagyo. Hopefully, you're safe. Salamat for watching. Um, Eman Valenzuela, are you planning to do an election related topic or Philippine president topic video? Maybe in the future. I actually um, did um, interviews with um, GMA News TV. They have a series about different presidents of the Philippines that's going to be rolling out in the coming months. Um, one of them is about uh, Manuel L. Quezon, and you can see me there <laughs> talking about Manuel L. Quezon. So I'm um, waiting for more of those um, to come out from GMA. Um, yeah, so there's also plans for me to do other election related topics or Philippine president topic in the coming months gearing up to the Philippine elections in May. So yes, stay tuned. And if you're, if you can't wait, watch um, GMA's video about Manuel Al Quezon, um, stand for tweet video. And I mean it with um, another uh, great historian from the Philippines, Shao Chua. Da -da -da. Juan Antonio asks, what happened in the Battle of Bangkusai? So Battle of Bangkusai, <laughs> it's a long story. I have an old video about it that I need to update. Um, it was from 2016, I think. Um, so what happened in the Battle of Bangkusai? Battle of Bangkusai was, um, I guess, the last major battle in, in Manila that um, that was between the Luzones and, and, and the Spaniards. So the Luzones were the ancestors of today's, well, who now identify as Kapampangan and Tagalog. Um, so... And the Battle of Bangkusai was mainly fought by Kapampangans. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say like Kapampangan again, but yes. Um, um, so um, it was a big naval battle that sadly um, the Spaniards won and that, that resulted in the Spaniards solidifying or consolidating their control of Met what is now Metro Manila. Um, and it happened in, Bang in the Bangkusai channel in what is now Tondo. So you can still actually see Bangkusai as a strict name if I'm not mistaken in, in Tondo. Um, um, what kind of guns from Juan Antonio again did the Kapampangans use back in the day? Um, a stingal or a stingar or um, um, arquebus um, is, is a gun that the Kapampangans used to use back in the day. And Lataka, of course, the, the hand or the, the, the smaller cannons, the indigenous cannons from Southeast Asia. Um, from the UK, um, Sir Kirby, the use of amulets, again, a trait we got from Spanish, or is it prevalent during pre-colonial Philippines, watching from the UK? Um, it is pre-colonial. Our, our beliefs in the agimat or amulets, that gives us, you know, extra power. Um, it is a pre-colonial tradition, and actually it is still practiced in the Philippines and Indonesia. So if you go to Indonesia, they have their own um, agimats then over there. Um, it's very similar to the Philippines, just uh, less or not Christian, because now our agimats have been somewhat Christianized in the Philippines. And yeah. Um, and there's also a connection between agimats and the tattoos of our ancestors, the traditions between agimats and tattoos. So it is a pre-colonial tradition. And yeah, it's a topic that maybe I can make a video about in the future. Salamat for your question. Ta -da -da -da. Did I miss another question? Cool, a few more minutes left in our live stream today. Thank you again. This is my first live stream by myself. <laughs> my first live stream, official live stream on my channel. So maraming maraming salamat. 
Okay, for me, from John Suva again, um, are you going to have a video about the medical creatures across Southeast Asia, like Penangalan, Krasu, Kasu, Layak? I did the video about it. Um, and you can see it in my videos about Trese. I talked about it. Um, there's another video that I that I, I did on Philippine mythological creatures. You can um, find it on my channel. But yeah, I did talk about um, the differences and the similarities between Penangalan, Mananangal, Magtatanggal, um, Mangkukutud in Pampanga and Krasu of Thailand, Krasu of Laos, the Yak from Balinese tradition. So yeah, there's um, a lot of similarities in this in this uh, mythological creatures. Salamat for asking. Um, hello, Dan K. Luis from Bataan. Oh, cool. Bataan is very close to Pampanga. <laughs> and parts of Bataan used to speak of Pampanga. Or they still speak of Pampanga. So Bataan used to be part of Pampanga then. Um, I ha ah, my favorite historian, Filipino historian, I have a lot. <laughs> um, one person that comes to the top of my head is Renato Constantino, who is the one who wrote about the miseducation of Filipinos. He's a great one. Um, but yeah, the thing, the thing is, um, it's hard for me to have a favorite because they have their own strengths and weaknesses as I, you know, when I look at things. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of favorite, I guess, <laughs> recommended historians. And usually in my videos, you can find my recommended readings and resources underneath in, in the video description. So not, I... Sometimes I, I sometimes I'm not able to add them, but I'm trying my best to add them every time I make a video. <laughs> so a reminder, thank you, Quaker Review. By the way, so make you still need to make an updated video about the involvement of early warriors in or warriors from the Philippines in mainland Southeast Asia. Yes. Yeah, because a lot of people forgot that our ancestors were brave warriors and they were always um you know, involved in a lot of different wars in Southeast Asia from Sumatra, sa, sa Indonesia, sa Burma, Myanmar, sa Cambodia, sa Thailand. Um, our ancestors were everywhere fighting wars. Um, oh, well, technically we're out of time, <laughs> um, but I'm happy to stay a little bit longer since there's a lot more questions. And if you're enjoying my live stream today, thank you. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll do a quick commercial break. <laughs> not, not a commercial break, but, you know, a quick break. I'll be right back. I just need to use the CR, the restroom. And I'll be back answering more of your questions and sharing more of my knowledge. Um, and, yeah, thank you again for watching. Again, the donation link is in the comments in the video description then. TinyURL.com 2021 Thai Foods. Help us raise money for the people, the families that were affected by the Thai food in the Philippines. Salamat. I'll be right back. Ay, nawala yung aking Be Right Back screen. Ayan. BRB. Come on. <laughs> Hindi nagla-load ang aking BRB screen. Ayan.
Cool. Hello, I'm back. Um, are you still here? Cool. There's still people here. Um, I'm gonna, probably going to say another 10 more minutes and then, or 10, 15 more minutes and then I'll, I'll log out for today. And again, this live stream is going to be happening again tomorrow. Um, uh, da, 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 da. A question from Eman Valenzuela. Meron po ba nag-attempt to colonize the Philippines during the Spanish era? I believe you're asking if there are other um, attempts to colonize the Philippines during when the Philippines was already a Spanish colony. And yes, so one of it is the recent video that I made is about the British attempt at conquering the Philippines. Um, they succeeded in only invading Manila and conquering Manila, pero not the entire Philippines. Um, there's also a big attempt for many, many decades um, that the Dutch from what is now Indonesia were um, trying to to invade the Philippines, but they've been repelled by the Kapampangans. Um, and yeah, so yes, there's a lot of different attempts from other colonizers to colonize the Philippines, not just the Spaniards. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you for the question, Eman. Valenzuela. Um, hello, okay. Um, Jem Dejano from Davao City. Hello. Kumusta? Um, or they made other comments. Uh, question again. Um, quicker be. <laughs> <Ako let. laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. You have good questions. Um, is Tondo considered considered part of Brunei back then as a vassal state, or is it a completely independent state with some ties with the Bruneian royal family? The short answer is, um, no. It is. Um, it is not. Uh, I I'm, I wouldn't consider it a vassal state of Brunei because um, vassal is very um, feudal and feudal um, is a very feudal and Eurocentric term. It, it's the the definition of vassal in European um, context is very different in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia. So um, Tondo was not a colony or a vassal of Brunei, but uh, uh, Tondo was part of. The, uh, it's complicated. <laughs> um, Tondo was um, traditionally is the capital actually of the of the kingdom of Luzon um, and, and the kingdom of Luzon used to extend from central Luzon to southern Luzon. Um, and um, um, so Tondo used to be the capital of, of, of what is the kingdom of Luzon in other sources. But this kingdom of Luzon is also not one big kingdom. It's a collection of many different um, states. Um, so it is not uh, considered, I wouldn't consider it a vassal state of Brunei, but it is, yeah, it is a, a independent state that has um, close ties with the royal family of Brunei. So if you're not familiar with um, the royal families of the Philippines, um, the royal families of Sulu, the Sultan of Sulu, and the royal families of Luzon, or Lusong in Luzon, um, what is now, uh, or the royal families of Manila and Tondo are closely related to Brunei. So at one point, the Sultan of Brunei, the Raja of Manila, the Lakan of Tondo, the Sultan of Sulu were all first cousins. They were all the grandchildren of Sultan Bolkiya of Brunei and Putri Lela Menchenai of Sulu. So there's a lot of close blood ties. So I guess my comparison for those who are more familiar with European history is that when you, when people say that Tondo or Manila was a vassal of Brunei, just because the rulers of Tondo are related to the rulers of Brunei, it's like saying that at one point, Germany and Russia were a vassal of the United Kingdom because they related to the king of the United Kingdom. Or like, for example, the emperor of Germany, the Kaiser Wilhelm was the grandson of Queen Victoria. So would you say that, you know, Germany was a vassal of the British? No. Um, or it's the same with the King of France. At one point, the King of Spain was the grandson of the King of France, but Spain was an independent kingdom, not a vassal of France. So it's the same in the Philippines. So the kingdoms of Luzon, the Sulu, Sultanates of Sulu, and the Sultan of Brunei were all related to one another, but they're not necessarily a colony of each other. So hopefully that answered the question. Uh, it's a video topic that can also be a video topic in the future. It, uh, yeah. And somewhat related question from Emilon42 on YouTube. Um, did you make a story about the Sultan of Sulu? Yes, uh, I've done um, a few videos about the Sultan of Sulu. Um, I hope I plan to do more videos about the Sultan of Sulu. Um, one of the video I made videos I made was about the, the ruler of Sulu, the, the um, king of Sulu that was buried in China, who died in China, was buried in a you know a big royal tomb in China. Um, that you can still visit today. Uh, Paduka Pahala or Paduka Batara. You can still visit that in China today. Um, and I also made a video about the love story between uh, Putri Lele Menchenai of Sulu, the princess of Sulu, the granddaughter of the first Sultan of Sulu, and the fifth Sultan of Brunei, Sultan Bulkiya. Um, so 
Um, those are two of the videos that I made specifically about Sulu. Um, and I plan to do more. So shout out to all our friends in the Sulu Historical and Cultural Society. Magsukul. Uh, again, question for Emilod42. You mentioned the Kingdom of Luzon. Is the Maharlika Kingdom true? It's not. <laughs> Maharlika is not a kingdom. Maharlika is a social class in, in pre-colonial Luzon. Um, it's the same as Mardika in Kapampangan. Um, and it means, um, it literally, the, the literal definition of Maharlika is free. Um, and it refers to the people who are used who used to be slaves but were freed. So, dati mga alipin na naging malaya. So, they were the Maharlikas. Maharlikas is not the royal class, it's not the nobility, and it's not a kingdom. Um, I made a video about it, but I can definitely extend more because that was a short video. Salamat. Um, hopefully that, that clears up questions or this uh, mythology about Marlika. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, there's two related uh, questions, one from Jem Dehano from Davao, history in Davao region, and then there's one from Zuje from Davao Den. Um, um, what happened in that one particular area? I'm personally not as well versed or not knowledgeable as much as I would love to about Davao, um, but uh, it's something in my to do list to do research more. So, um, yeah. So, so, so hopefully in the future I can make a video about um, the different um, or the the, the particular culture of Davao. But thank you for asking. It's a great reminder for me then to to dig deeper. Um, before I go on back to the questions, ano muna tayo? Live update muna tayo ng ating fundraiser kasi, kasi nga ang live streams natin this week and next week ay para sa mga nasalanta ng bagyo sa Pilipinas. And um, I forgot what I said earlier kung magkano, but it was around $2,000 um, that we were able to raise in the, in, for, for Typhoon on debt. Uh, victims in the Philippines. Um, but let me just share with you the update in just in the last hour. Uh, so in the last hour, marami nang donate. At ngayon, ang ating donation is now um, $3,283.09. So maraming maraming salamat to all, to everyone who donated. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's right here. Zoom in that. Yeah. So, so far, ay, kita ba? Yeah, kita pala. So yeah, we, we raised to $3,283 in the last hour. Um, so maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much. Nakalpong salamat to, to everyone who donated to our fundraiser for National Alliance for Filipino Concerns. Um, you know, donations for the Bayanihan Relief and Rehabilitation in the, the different communities affected by the typhoon in the Philippines, uh, Typhoon Odette. So maraming maraming salamat. This is really, you know, exciting. Maraming salamat um, to, all the, to everyone who donated. And if you haven't donated yet and you have the capacity to, to do so, Please um, donate in the links down below. Maraming, maraming salamat. Yay, $3,000. So I guess if I'm not mistaken, we raised almost $300, over $200 just in the last hour. So maraming, maraming salamat sa lahat na donate. Um, Nakalpong salamat. Magsukol. Terima kasi. <laughs> Ang yaman. Um, Diyos mabalos. Um, thank you. Um, and again, we're going to keep doing this for the rest of the week and next week. Um, except for Christmas because I have to spend Christmas with family. <laughs> um, so maraming, maraming salamat. ta -da -da. Let me just drink some more water. Um, question from Joshua. Um, Joshua asked, was Galura um, Typhoon, um, the being of Typhoon, considered a benevolent considered to be benevolent and prayed to, or were they looked at as a cautionary punishment um, from the god? Or, or in this case, in Kapampangan mythology, um, it's Apong Sinukwan. So Apong Galura is the right hand of Apong Sinukwan that he sends to bring typhoons, to cleanse the society. Um, in many ways, it is seen as a benevolent um, punishment, if, if that made sense. So it, it is a chance for the pre-colonial societies to reassess their, their way of, of, of living. Um, and... Yeah, they prayed to Apong Galura. Um, it, it's not usually, you know, they don't really see Apong Galura as this, you know, um, um, scary thing. So actually, Apong Galura is also the, um, what do you call this, the patron god, the patron diwata of the sailors. So to prevent, um, you know, accidents in the open sea whenever our ancestors would sail, they do pray to Apong Galura. So um, yeah, so in many ways, I guess it's a combination. It's a, it is a cautionary punishment from the, the, the gods. 
uh, the pre-colonial gods, um, but in many ways it has also seen as a benevolent um, cleansing of the society. Um, it, I guess it it would depend. I'm not sure, but maybe our ancestors. It would depend on how devastating the typhoon was for them. Um, yeah, but I can I can def definitely ask more about this. Ask my elders about this because they they know more. Um, so yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, Patrick Mitchell, if I made a game set in the Philippines, what is the earliest time period we could really credibly give trading vessels cannons? Give to, oh, uh, I guess the question is about when's the earliest period we had uh, cannons and trading vessels. Trading vessels we've always had for longest time as you know as an Austronesian. Um, with the, the best sailors in the history of the world were Austronesians, and, and we are part of that huge family of different ethnicities. Um, but in terms of canons in the Philippines, as as if you really want to be strict on what is written um, historically, um, it's um, 1500s would be the most um, earliest historically speaking in the Philippines that we know of. But as early as the 13th century, they already had um, similar canons in what is now Indonesia. Um, and they were closer related, related dead subcultures to Indonesia. So to be safe, I would say 1500s, but probably even before that. So thank you for your question, Patrick. I hope I was able to answer your question. Question from John. John asks, did Miguel Lopez de Legazpi establish Manila being the capital of the Philippines? Um, in, the, in the short answer, yes, he established Manila as the capital of Spanish Philippines. Um, but again, Manila existed before Spanish colonialism. It used to be um, uh, the, the fortified city of Manila was a Muslim walled city in, in Luzon. Um, so it existed before Spanish colonialism. Ta -da -da. Comment from Riverboy. Yay, hello. Uh, so for those who don't know Riverboy, yeah, um, exciting book coming out from Riverboy coming soon. Um, so um, um, Riverboy also studied at Harvard. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, he just graduated um, this year, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you for doing your, your um, research on my buying. Salamat. Um, so yeah, there's a book about my buying coming soon from Riverboy. So exciting. <laughs> um, follow his page, Cultura. <laughs> um, yeah, so the relationship of the Taosug language to other languages around Sulu is also a great topic. Yes, that's a good topic. Uh, yeah, I'll add it to my to-do list. Actually, in my long because I have a long to-do list of videos. One of them is um, the relationship between because people have asked me um, between Taosug and Kapampangan. So even though Kapampangan is in Luzon, Taosug is in Sulu. There's a lot of words that are similar uh, between Kapampangan, Taosug, and, and Maguindanawan. So um, that's a good topic in the future. So yes, thank you for the recommendation and reminder. So shout out Kate Kuya River Boy. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're still in Seattle, right? <laughs> Home of the Starbucks coffee. <laughs> um the Julius TV is asking, how huh, do you have more pedal knowledge about Pangasinan? Um, yes. Um, I'm actually uh, that's one of my to-do list in the in 2022, a video about pre-colonial Pangasinan. So beyond the, the legend uh, and the, um, you know, the mythological, not just mythological, the legend and the history of um, Urduha, uh, I, I have um, planned, something's planned for the pre-colonial pre -colonial, uh, history of Pangasinan, uh, like Kabuloan. Um, yeah, so I'm also, I have roots in Pangasinan. One of my Lola is from um, Pangasinan. So shout out to all our Pangasinan viewers. I wish I could speak Pangasinan though. <laughs> um, I, I, I did not learn. <laughs> but we used to visit Pangasinan every summer um, in the Philippines when I was living in the Philippines to visit our cousins in Pangasinan. Um, Rudy Virai is asking, what are the great resources to read if you want to learn more about pre-colonial Philippine culture and mythology? There's not one single answer, but the, again, um, if you missed my, my answer, Kanina, one of the earlier questions, um, my, my advice would be um, looking at primary sources first, and then also um, what has been documented in oral traditions is also a good way to start, and um, balancing that. Um, and yeah, so looking at 
primary sources in a, with a critical lens. Because a lot of people, sadly, when, when I see on online, even on face, especially on Facebook, like people would read critical or would read primary sources, but then they, they would just take it as facts. But when you look at uh, what I call this uh, primary sources, you have to analyze it. You have to be critical about it. Um, but in terms of um, books that are readily available. Um, resources about uh, pre-colonial Philippine culture and mythology, um, Boxer Codex. Um, there's two different translations of Boxer, Boxer Codex in English. Um, um, one that was published in the Philippines and one, if I'm not mistaken, was published in the U.S. Um, those, um, it's a good, those, are, those are a good start um, to learn more about pre-colonial um, Philippine culture and mythology. It was written during this, the time when the Spanish first came to the Philippines. Um, there are also books by... Um, um, Blacking out. Um, William Henry Scott is also a good start. Um, um, and again, whenever you read books about pre-colonial Philippines, you always have to, you know, question. Um, you know, um, don't take it as one hundred percent. Just you know, be critical about what you're reading. Then, um, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, there's great books. Then uh, that was written by Cesar Manjul about Muslims in the Philippines. That's also a great um, starting point. Um, and there's a lot of articles that was written by um, Luciano Pierre Santiago. Um, so his, his work, his articles are also a great start to learn more about early colonial Philippines and pre-colonial Philippines dead. Um, and <laughs> um, another one is Conquistas de las Islas Filipinas by Gaspar de San Agustin that was written during the Spanish period, but talks but you can learn more a lot about um, pre-colonial and early colonial Philippines. Um, Guy the Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas de Antonio Morga. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, and um, I guess shameless plug na rin. Oh no, it's not here. My books, right there. Yeah, and so ito, guy, ito, this is my, my book about Tando. Um, it has a lot about pre colonial society of the Luzones in the Philippines. Um, some chapters are actually written in Kapapan and Tagalog. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of books that I can recommend, and usually when I make videos about pre-colonial Philippines, I try my best to include recommended readings, uh, video description. So if you dig deeper in the video description, there's usually a list of recommended readings and resources that you can find online or offline. Um, but yeah, hopefully that uh, there's a lot. <laughs> hopefully that those are good starts for um, Rudy and who whoever is interested. Um, and the baba. Anthony Romain is asking also, or it's said in the comments, also interesting topic is the Manduke Tagalog dialect. Yes, um, it, which is said to be the closest to pre-Hispanic Tagalog language. Yes, so that that is that is um, true. A lot of uh, scholars believe that the dialect of Tagalog in Mar spoken in Manduke is the closest to the um, you know the pre-colonial Tagalog language, in the original Tagalog language. Um, a lot of um, historians and linguists have mapped out. Um, the Tagalog um, his prehistory and um, for those who may not know Tagalog language actually evolved from um, the Bicolano and the Visayan languages so um, it's fascinating the history of Tagalog language is fascinating because if you look at the grammar of the Tagalog language it's closely related to the languages in Bicol and the Visayas but if you look at the vocabulary there have a lot of Tagalog words that were borrowed and adopted from Kapampangan so it's, it has a very interesting history being this um, language that um, in the borders of the Visayan, the Bicolanos, and the Kamapangan. Um, but yeah, so good topic then. Future topic, Ang Maninduque Tagalog. Thank you, Anthony Roman. Yan, oh Yan, may seven minutes na lang tayo until the, the end of tonight's, um, today or tonight, wherever you're watching, um, live stream. So again, I'll be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. in, in California. Um, time um, that is about 12 p.m. in the Philippines, 12 noon tomorrow. And tomorrow I have a guest. I have a guest, um, si Ate Justine Villanueva. Uh, let me actually find her book really quick. Yeah. Um, so I have two of her books. Um, Ate Justine Villanueva from Sawaga 
um, River Press, and she um, is based in California, but she writes books about children's books about um, the Philippines um, and her culture from Bukidnon. Um, and yeah, she'll be my guest tomorrow. We'll be talking, the topic tomorrow is actually very interesting. Um, we'll be talking about um, water related deities and mythologies in the Philippines. So, yeah, exciting. And tomorrow <laughs> with Ate Justine Villanueva. Um, okay, <laughs> good night. Okay, and di ko mabasa yung bye bye. Does it say kupal? <laughs> so good night. Thank you then for watching. Thank you and good night from the UK. Wow. Um, Carolina Sears can't wait. Yes, I also cannot wait to to have um Ate Justine join our live stream tomorrow. Yeah, thank you then, Gwyneth. Um, Aristo, thank you for for um. Um, joining your live stream from the very beginning until now. Thank you. Um, yeah. So hopefully I do more, or I plan on doing more of this live stream um, on fe Facebook and YouTube. Um, so this week and next week will be uh, several days of live streaming. Um, this week, um, today, tomorrow, and on Wednesday. On Wednesday in the Calif in California, or Thursday in the Philippines, our topic is Bakunawa and other um, moon-eating dragons and other dragon-like creatures in, in the Philippine mythologies. So um, we'll be learning about Bakunawa from the Visayas and the Bicola, uh, the Bicol region. Uh, we'll be learning more about Minokawa from Mindanao, um, Lawu from Kapampangan traditions, Laho from Tagalog. So exciting. Coming days. Um, uh, the question is, did you ever finish the animated series? I said, not yet. So unfortunately, um, life happened. <laughs> um, a lot of um, personal things happened in over the summer that I wasn't able to finish my Trece breakdown series, but I do plan on coming back to it next year. Um, so yeah, um, so exciting. Yes, I'm gonna do more of the breakdown of the creatures depicted in Trece. And I'll save my answer to your question what I thought about it <laughs> in, in the next coming videos. So maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng um, um, nanood ng ating or na, sumali, sumali sa ating live stream. Thank you very much for joining our live, our live stream today. Um, again, I'll be back tomorrow and Wednesday night in California or Thursday afternoon then in the Philippines. Um, and next week then, and again, this, this live stream is to raise money for the families and the communities affected by the typhoon in the Philippines. So if you haven't donated yet and you have the ability and the capacity to donate to help our Kababayans in the Philippines. Um, every penny counts, literally every penny counts. So tinyurl.com 2021 Typhoons. Um, I think donation link. And you can find it in the comments below. Um, one more question from Jack. Um, is Chavacano a language was spoken uh, in Zamboanga City? Yes, so Chavacano is a... Um, a language um, that is spoken in, in Zamboanga City, but also there used to be a Chabacano that was spoken in Cavite. Um, so, um, although now it's more predominant in Zamboanga. So, thank you for asking. Ah, yan. So, thank you again for, for those who donated. Um, the, the, the donation we have so far is over $3,000 now from $2,900 at the beginning of this live stream. So, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng nag-donate. Um, mar malaking tulong ito sa ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas. It's a big help to our our um, people in the Philippines who are, you know, struggling and suffering from the impacts of the typhoon. Um, yeah. Um, Juan Antonio is asking, do the Kapampangas also have moon mythology? Um, yes, there, there is. Um, Lau is, the, is a, a pre-colonial um, dragon-like creature that eats the sun and the moon in Kapampangan mythology. And I'll talk more about it in, uh, in my live stream with, with Ati Ligaya. Um, so that would be on Wednesday. So tomorrow is a different um, topic. Tomorrow will be um, anything related to the water mythologies of the Philippines. So too big, water, um, the room. So that will be our topics tomorrow with Ati Justine Villanueva. Um, the author of this children's books um, and another book coming up for her. She'll talk about it tomorrow then. Um, and then the day after that, we'll be talking about the different moon-eating mythology in the Philippines. So one is a crab and one is a giant bird. One is a giant drag sea dragon. So there's a lot of different 
um, similar but different uh, mythologies in the Philippines regarding eclipse. And we'll be talking more about that on Wednesday night in California or Thursday uh, morning, afternoon in the Philippines. And I also have a video planned. Um, so apart from the live stream, I'm also doing a video, um, a full-on video, 20-minute video about the different uh, dragon-like creatures in the Fili different Philippine mythologies. Um, so yeah, so stay tuned for those two if you want to learn more about um, moon-eating um, 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 mythology and dragons in pre-colonial Philippines. Thank you. Cool. We have a few more minutes, maybe one more minute. And then, um, maraming maraming salamat again for those who donated. Um, every penny counts. Um, a dollar goes a long way to help our Kamabayans back in the Philippines. So maraming maraming salamat. I'll be doing this throughout the week and next week. Um, cool. And maybe the last comment that I'm going to be highlighting today is from Josville. Um, from um, the Philippines. Oh, wait, I'm not sure where you are right now. <laughs> um, but to John Seals and Benok, hi, Queer Kermit. Benok here, happy holidays. Happy holidays. I've known uh, Benok since he was a baby. <laughs> so hello, Benok. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments, I forgot if you're in the Philippines or still abroad. So maraming maraming salamat for joining me in my first um, Q&A live stream, answering your questions. Um, and talking about typhoon mythology as well. At the same time, raising money and funds for our body hand response to the, for the to help our the victims of typhoon in the Philippines. Um, maraming maraming salamat. Merry Christmas sa ating mga kababayang um, who celebrate uh, Christmas. Um, happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas. Maligayang Pasko in Tagalog. Um, uh, yeah, so maraming maraming salamat din. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of thank yous in the comments. So thank you. Um, for joining. This is fun. I should probably do more of this. Let me know in the comments if I should do more um, live stream like this. So, or, so so far, I only have plans for this week and next week, but maybe in 2022, we'll do more of a regular live stream episodes. Maraming salama. I clicked something wrong. Um, and then for the again before I go, um, I want to share something really quick for the for those in the U.S. who would like to join us. That's um, good. Tomorrow we'll um, six p.m. Pacific. Um, we'll be doing a um, situation report of the situation in the Philippines. Um, Yet. I don't think you can see it yet, but yeah. So, so for those who are interested in joining us, or, or tomorrow, right before I do my live stream, I'll be doing, I'll be, I'll be emceeing this um, situation report about the situation in the Philippines and our typhoon um, response, buying hand response for typhoon Odette. Um, so, if you're interested in in learning more of no, you know, learning more about the situation on the ground. We have partners um, from the Philippines in doing the groundwork, the grassroots organizations in the Philippines that we work with to help our Kababayans in, in the Visayas and Mindanao regions that were affected by the typhoon. Um, and then we'll be talking about how we, um, Filipinos or anyone in the U.S. can help our Kababayans back in the Philippines. And yeah, that's, that will be tomorrow night. Um, so register. Um, I'll be emceeing the event. So learn more about what's going on in the Philippines and how we can help as Filipinos across the different parts of the world. Um, and then after that, after this, will be my um, second live stream this week talking about water mythologies in the Philippines. And yeah, so maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng nanood. <laughs> maraming maraming salamat. Um, okay, um, two more minutes or one, one more minute. I went over time, but yes, thank you. I'm reading the comments, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> maraming maraming salamat. Thank you for doing, yay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, maraming salamat everyone. Thank you again for joining me. Um, well, I'll be back next tomorrow, <laughs> um, 8 p.m. Pacific, 12 noon in um, the Philippines to talk more about um, water mythologies. This is fun. And don't forget to donate if you, if you have the capacity and extra money to donate this holiday season. You know, it's the season of giving. So let's give help um, to our Kababayans back at home. The links is scrolling. This is cool. I feel like I'm in a TV news. 
when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a newscaster. <laughs> so this is fun that I have this on my channel now. Thank you. Um, I actually don't have any plans on how to end this. <laughs> how do I end this? I mean, I should have had a slide that says salamat. So maraming maraming salamat again. Um, if for those who are actually interested, before I forget, um, quick announcement and plug um, my books. Um, where, did I, where did I put my books? Um, so if you go to my website, my books are actually on sale. So kirbyaraldio.com slash shop and you can use the code SNOW15 to get 15% off. So 15 your coupon code. Um, yeah, so so if you are interested in my books and coloring books, um, SNOW15 um, coupon code to get 15% off from my website. Um, and then there, there's going to be a lot more sales as we get closer to Christmas. So stay tuned for that. And actually, for those who have been asking me, this, my first book, Black Eyes and Brown Freedom, will actually be available as an ebook very, very soon. In a few days, it will be released <clears throat> as an ebook. So yeah, this is my first, very first book that I wrote about the Philippine American War and how African Americans helped us fight for our freedom. So yeah. So I'm very excited for more ebooks that are coming out from my channel. So yan, um, that's it for me today. Maraming maraming salamat. Um, and see you all tomorrow for my next live stream. Or you can watch see me in my <laughs> previous videos that I posted on YouTube. Um, again, thank you so much for everyone who joined us and donated to our um, fundraiser for the victims and the families affected by Typhoon Odette in the Philippines. Maraming maraming salamat. Taos pusog masasalamat sa inyong lahat. Um, and we'll be back tomorrow talking more about Mythologies about water and raising funds for our kababayans back at home. Maligayang Pasko, uh, Merry Christmas, um, Happy Holidays. Thank you again for joining me tonight, today, wherever you are, <laughs> this morning. <laughs> so, maraming maraming salamat. Peace out. Kita kits in Tagalog or in Kababangan, Mikitiks. Bye. Ay, <laughs> di ko pa na click. <laughs> For reals now. Bye. <laughs> See you tomorrow.